recording on? The recording is now going. Hi everyone, I'm Peter Robinson. Um, if you don't already know that, I think most of you probably do, because I have a big mouth. Um, I'm here to talk about the state of ARM, both ART64, the 64-bit variant, and ARM v7, the 32-bit variant. Um, my slide deck's fairly straightforward in that it's just got subject headers, and I will basically go through it relatively quickly. Um, feel free to butt in at any time you like, except about device support. We can do that at the end. Um, so, core toolchain and features. Um, actually, not much to say about this anymore. It used to be, um, you know, we had GCC and not much else, and then it was we've added functionality. Um, now, we've got everything from Golang and um, I think even Rust all the way through. Um, the only big set of tool chain that we're currently missing on ART64 is Mono. Um, since the Microsoft purchase, that has all landed upstream and we're just waiting for basically the release with all those patches actually in it. Um, should, I think, be around in the F25 cycle. If not, you know, it's not far away. Um, so that the first time I did this talk with AI 64 it was this massive big length of exceptions, and now I'm happy to say it's not. Um, and on top of this, we have, um, on top of, say, the Golang stack, we now have Docker and, I think, Rocket, although I'm not sure about that, um, Kubernetes, um, OpenShift and various other bits of the Golang stack. Um, so, um, in and in Fedora 24, we now ship um, ART64 and ARMv7 Docker images out of the box, like as in the base images. Um, we're looking to work with Adam Miller, who I don't see, um, to get. Um, OSBS and Docker layered image support in there as well. Um, so that probably won't be the, quite the same time as um, X8664, but it shouldn't be too far behind it. Um, server edition, again, very, very boring. Um, I think probably the biggest news here is that as part of the Fedora 26 cycle, um, which is now running, we're going to propose <coughs> promoting the server addition to a primary architecture. Um, so there'll be discussion about that sort of thing probably going out on the mailing list in the next couple of weeks um, as part of a slightly different proposal, um, which I will mention later on. Um, cloud addition, um, alongside the Docker images, we're now also producing um, Quimu-based cloud images. Um, and as part of the new Compose process that was introduced in Fedora 24 for primary, which we are running on across the secondary architectures as well, um, we're doing nightly cloud images, nightly Docker images. Um, and so from that perspective, again, nicely boring, looks a lot like x86-64. Um, workstation edition. A uh, little bit more interesting here. Um, all the stuff's there. Um, on ARMv7 it runs. We even now have accelerated graphics stacks primarily on the um, NVIDIA stuff. Um, so at home on some of the Jetson devices I have a fully accelerated uh, Wayland GNOME 3 um, stuff. Um, AART64 is a little bit more interesting in that there's not really that many devices. Um, the GNOME team have lent me a Dragon board, um, which we may, um, which we're basically working to get, and that should run GNOME out of the box. Um, I have NVIDIA sent me a Jetson TX1, which is a 64-bit um, processor with a Maxwell. Uh, GPU in there and we should be supporting them in Fedora 25. So from an AR64 point of view, um, they will be our first sort of fully accelerated desktop 
devices. Um, similarly with ARMv7, there's a lot of uh, 2D stuff that works really, really well, the 3D on a handful of devices here and there. Um, so, yeah, relatively boring, but nowhere. Uh, so, what do you mean by electrical boards? I mean, like a GPIO, any GPIO plus any uh, graphical supported device. Is any device in the list? Um, these specifications? On AR64? Yep. Um, pro uh, probably our, at the moment, um, full desktop and GPIO, yep. nothing at the moment. Um, in the Fedora 25 cycle, we should have support for the Jetson TX1, which is the NVIDIA one, um, and possibly the Dragon board, which is a Qualcomm one, which has um, in 96 board form factor, which will do fully accelerated 3G, but it has, um, the major issue there is it has a terrible bootloader. Um, so it will actually run and boot um, and there are people running Fedora 24 on it with fully accelerated desktops, but there is vast amounts of gaffer tape and bubble gum and various other bits and pieces applied between the bootloader and the kernel to make that work. Um, and someone actually posted a remix on it, and I'm not sure the kernel they ship, but it's a weird one. Um, so there are stuff there that will do that and do it relatively well, um, but um, not like beautiful. Um, in Fedora 25, we'll also probably um, be able to support the Odroid C1 um, and potentially some of the rock chip stuff, but that won't be fully accelerated 3D stuff. It'll probably be more um, very basic or marginal accelerated XFCE style desktop stuff. And you can always grab one of those server boards put Radeon or an NVIDIA card in it, and it will work. Yeah, I have one I such set of some devices too. That's why yeah, but so the Mustang board which you're referring yeah. to yeah. there doesn't have uh, generally usable GPIO that you can okay. use for sensors or whatever it is that you wish to use it for. Yeah. Did, did you say you wanted to defer device to support discussions to the end? Yes. Okay. Thank you. There is another device that I'll mention later on as well. Um, so general user space, um, yeah, pretty much complete. Um, 90, so I think of packages that we don't currently build on ART64 that we build on primary architectures, there is something like 120 out of the 18,000 in Fedora. So it is less than a percent of all the packages. Um, and they're sort of things like uh, Prolog and Pascal and a few other bits and pieces like that which potentially are possible to support but nobody's really shown the interest to do the bootstrapping requirements to do so. Um, but it's tiny. So like, yeah, I think about 0.5% of packages that don't actually build on AR64. Um, ARMv7 doesn't have that problem. So Pascal totally supported. Yes. Yep. Uh, we've, we're, we've had support for Haskell in there for probably about three or four releases. Oh. It wasn't quite as accelerated, um, but Jens, who is here somewhere, um, worked on it and it is now, I believe, fully accelerated. Um, kernel, um, again, pretty good. Um, a few releases ago, we used to carry a patch of around 100,000 lines. Um, which was, um, we currently have one patch set um, for AR64 which provides um, PCIe ACPI support which is needed for some of the enterprise hardware like the Moonshot chassis. Um, the vast majority of that patch set has landed in or is landing in the 4.8 kernel which is in the current dev cycle and so we'll end up with I think around um, less than a thousand lines of patch. Um, in terms of device support, um, it's improving a lot, but again, so is the availability of actual hardware. 
Um, so it, it's relatively straightforward, um, relatively reasonable, it tends to work in most cases. Um, some like the Odroid C2 and other devices are still sort of dealing with upstreaming stuff but are getting there and improving a lot all the time every sort of new kernel cycle. So every 12 weeks or so with the new kernel, 10 or 12 weeks, um, you know, we tend to add like quite a bit more. But it's all relatively straightforward and the main Fedora kernel team doesn't generally hate me so much anymore for having to deal with 100,000 lines of patches. We still have a couple of other patch sets we hate more. Yes! I'm not the most hated anymore! <laughs> Um, bootloaders. Speaking of things we hate. <laughs> hey, like, so, um, the U-boot, so there's a couple of major bootloaders that we support, obviously, on AI64, it is the lovely UEFI um, support. Um, one of the things that I kid you not, I was working on or with a lot of other people working on for about four years was there is an open source UFI implementation called Tiano Core, but it had a implementation of VFAT that was licensed and patent encumbered and hence we couldn't ship it. And we were kind of bothering a whole bunch of different people to try and get either that licensing problem solved or a different implementation in that could be shipped. Um, and interestingly, um, I've mentioned them once before already, um, Microsoft, as part of, I believe, the whole agreement um, that they've done with the open source community and in conjunction with Intel, um, actually fixed that problem so that they could basically ship UEFI or that version of UEFI stuff on OpenStack and various other bits and pieces. One of the nice side effects of that is we now have um, a firmware that works out of the box with VMs and other such um, things that we can ship in Fedora. So that fixed one of the problems. Um, UEF, uh, the other, um, so U-Boot is obviously the other bootloader that we use a lot on the SBCs such as um, the, um, Odroid and Chip and various other bits and pieces and there was an implementation of um, I suppose you would call it emulation of UEFI that will or UF, UEFI UF boot, services. boot services that runs on um, from U-Boot to enable us to boot um, a standard UEFI based scrub and kernel from that it kind of works, but not quite that well. I believe the problems are now fixed. I just need to get the time to actually sit down and hack on it and confirm it and make it finish up working. Once that happens, it makes it much easier to, for us to support things like the Pine64, um, the Odroid C2, and various other devices with the standard boot installer, Anaconda, stack um, that we already have supported for a number of releases. Um, on the enterprise level um, um, 64 devices, which obviously then makes um, the user experience much, much simpler and much, much easier um, for a lot of different reasons. Um, so one way or another, hell or high water, I intend on having that working um, to some degree for Fedora 25. Um, again, I'll come to those more details about those particular devices. Um, and as part of getting that working, we can then start shipping the standard uh, disk images that you can DD onto the uh, single board computers, similar to what we do for ARMv7. Um, so we're expecting, I'm expecting to have that one way or another, um, in one form or another, um, as part of Fedora 25. Um, I wanted it to be there for Fedora 24, but from a release engineering perspective, uh, Fedora 24 was immense. And they're just really, I just literally ran out of time where it's like I actually have to be able to sleep at some point. Um, so that was one of the um, very, very few things that we had to sleep in Fedora 24, um, sadly, because I just didn't have enough time um, or, and cycles to get it done. 
Do you envision people like a workflow where people would actually be able to just put a little stub on the SD card and you could run Anaconda on these devices? Or do, so, the so the question that? is for the video, do I envisage a situation where you can put a little stub on an SD card and run Anaconda? Yeah. Uh, yes, you can do it now. You've been able to do it pretty much from the outset. Um, so on a number of my test devices at home that have SATA ports on it, I have U-Boot on the SD card and it just sits there and it pixie boots off the network and does a kickstart install um, directly onto the hard disk using Anaconda. So that, that's been a standard relic. There are a few caveats and if you've got a device that has onboard NAND where the U-boot is running on the NAND, um, you can do that to like SD cards. There's a few corner cases where it's a little bit iffy. Like if you want to um, net, uh, if you want to run the U-boot on the SD card and install to the SD card, it tends to blow away the U-boot. And the way people have worked around that um, is then at, as part of the post-install process, they rewrite the U-boot out in the Kickstart as part of the post-install process. But it works now and it has done, um, on ARMv7 it's worked like that since about Fedora 18. I don't think a lot of people know that. I would like to learn about it from you and then I'll write a blog. That would be awesome. Thank you. And you're on video. Yes. Agreeing to it. I heard it. Um, so, ARC64 as a primary architecture. Um, this is a question that I get asked a lot, like three or four times a week, a lot. Um, I am in the process of doing a um, proposal um, which has a FESCO ticket and will be going out to the mailing list probably later on today um, because there is now a mostly organised wiki page with an FAQ and various other bits and pieces around it. Um, of redefining, asking FESCO to redefine what constitutes a secondary architecture, or as I'm now more referring to it, um, an alternate architecture. Um, so at the moment, the designator for primary and versus secondary is the instance of Koji that it runs in. Um, and that doesn't really hold true anymore with a bunch of I686 being sort of pushed to secondary architectures in various different forms. Um, and in the case of AI64 for server and even Docker and certain components, it makes perfect sense um, to promote it to primary because there's a lot of people that want it as such and are using it as such um, and have an expectation of it as such. Um, but then the promotion of, say, workstation on AI64 to primary makes no sense at all because there's not a lot of out-of-the-box devices that even work on it. Um, so, they w watch out for Devel mailing list. Basically, the proposal is that we run one instance of Koji that builds all the architectures and then the artifacts that are output, whether it's the workstation live, live images or the server installers or the Docker images, um, or layered images or any other um, thing that we may end up producing um, is the definition of what is primary and not. Um, which, I mean, a lot of the components of the proposal are already there um, and are already, so we have like in the case of um, release artifacts, we have blocking and non-blocking uh, release artifacts. And so that then basically becomes um, what is primary and what is secondary and you don't then have a primary architecture and a secondary architecture. You have x86-64 as a default architecture, and then you have alternate architectures, which are IBM Power, um, AR64, even ARMv7 to some degree, and then certain components of the release. Um, so that is a proposal that's going through, and then once that is accepted, and the, those changes have begun to enact, um, I will then propose promoting um, AR64 server to a primary um, release blocking 
um, artifact as part of that process. So that that's because um, just so that it's recorded and on video, and so I can now refer people to a 45-minute um, presentation um, every time they ask me as to what is the state of um, AR64 becoming primary. Uh, that is currently the state. So um, there'll be. I'm basically um, preparing to put on my asbestos suit and go into the firefight that may well be uh, the developed discussion over that and um, from there we'll take it from there. Um, so I mentioned I would leave um, questions about individual devices until the end. Um, one of the reasons for that is I'm sure someone's going to ask about Raspberry Pi because that is the other question that I get asked hundreds of times a month. Raspberry Pi 3 in 4.8 gets got 64 bits of I know. Um, be fun. So we actually support Raspberry Pi in Fedora 24 on the Raspberry Pi 2 and the Raspberry Pi 3. In what was the presentation about? Um, and it all actually works. The only thing I never got around to doing alongside the AR64 disk images was actually producing an image that you could just DD onto a card and have work because you've got to have this horrible little VFAT petition at the beginning and you have to set it up in a special way. And I can do that on my machine at home, no issues, like generate the image. The tool chain that currently builds the nightly images in Koji is an antiquated pile of crap, um, which we are working to replace with um, Live Media Creator, which is part of Lorax and the Anaconda stack. Um, the problem is, it's, and we made that change for the live CDs in Fedora 24, the intention was to make that change for the ARM disk images as well in Fedora 24, but there was some functionality that didn't work. Um, and so my intention was to do unofficial Raspberry Pi images uh, that people could consume um, on ARM v7 for both the Pi 2 and the Pi 3, um, and I just not got around to them yet. So, um, but we do actually support the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3 in Fedora 24. In Fedora 25, again, one way or the other, we will have disk images to enable that support. Um, and that should have fully accelerated GNOME stack with GPIO. So that could be the solution that you're after. I hope so. I want to use that Fedora on the ARM device so I can actually pull some stuff in this time for you. I can do Yeah, so one, one of the major blockers um, I had for um, sending it out and blog posting it and, and like kidding. media releasing yes. it and everything else is that I want it to be people to be able to DD it onto a thing and it comes up and it has like boots to a graphical login and um, you know so HDMI works and I don't want them to have to have a serial port to work stuff out to poke stuff to make stuff work because we're going to end up in a situation that as soon as we announce this, there's going to be like 10,000 downloads and I don't want 10,000 people coming along and drowning the few people that are actually there to help for support. So I basically almost want it to be um, user-proof. I was going to use another word, but yeah. Well, now you're equating those two things. <laughs> um, I didn't say it. I didn't know if one of your concerns about that is that you can't retroactively add the image to the mirror, so you don't want another image in the mirror. Well, I, I would, just to plant an idea in your ear, write a Docker container that pulls down the existing F24 image, munges it. OK, I'm just saying. Um, that way you could cross call and, and Windows and Mac people could get it, which there are a lot of them. Right. So, that's all. the image that I have, so the image, the image I have at home is a single image, so we would produce one for each to say XFCE, KDE, 
known, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, that for the Raspberry Pi use case, you can literally on a Mac or Windows or anything that has DD, DD it out, and it will boot by default out of the box on the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Then, if you wish to use it on a BeagleBone or any of the other devices, any of the other 180 odd devices that we support in Fedora 24, you use the Fedora Army image installer, which That's is the standard way. Any DD is out the U boot and various other bits and pieces, and it will then boot on those devices in the standard way that everyone is used to. Um, and then the only difference is that those devices will have like a 30 meg. VFAT petition at the beginning of the disk that they never need to deal with or look at or care about and what have you. And if they wish to delete it manually themselves, they can. But otherwise, it will just sit there and basically be ignored for the. That's awesome. Um, that, that, and, and that would be verboten, but since you're cool with that, then. No, no. So, I, like, I've literally thought this through for a couple of years to work out the simplest solution so that any Raspberry Pi user can try and, and just do it on a Windows or Mac or whatever and it's easy and it just works. But we don't kill the other users and we don't end up in a situation where we have two images of everything because that's just confusing. Right. Um, which comes to the, my intention is only to support the Raspberry Pi 3 as an v 7 device so that there is one image that if people want to run it on the Raspberry Pi 2 or the Raspberry Pi 3, it will run like that, which is exactly the same way as the Pi Foundation is doing it. Um, and the fact of the matter is that a device with half a gig or one, one gig of RAM with a broken USB controller and like a single broken USB controller that does all I.O. Um, is never going to be performant enough that a 64-bit operating system is going to make a shit of a difference. Um, so. Yes, the 4.8 kernel supports the 64-bit version of the Raspberry Pi 3. We will probably enable it just so people will stop bothering me. But it won't be, um, it, it will be there and people can consume it. But if it breaks, they get to keep both bits. Um, and the officially supported one will be ARMv7. That's awesome, Peter. Yeah. The same user question. So what are the devices you would suggest that our users to buy now? They want to try out new things for the world too. So do you have any suggestions for the users? Um, so, so the question is, what are the best devices to buy now um, for people to use? And the question I always have when people ask me this is, what do you want to use it for? Desktop users. Um, server. Cool. So, uh, des desktop users are Jetson TK1 because that will give you fully accelerated Wayland w desktop. Uh, with all sorts of nice things. It is not a cheap device though. It's about $300 or $200. Um, what about poor users? So any of the all winner A20 devices, so the QB truck is quite an expensive version of that. Uh, the, the Banana Pi, the Banana Pro are very good devices um, and they're very good for server related stuff because they have a SOC attached gigabit ethernet port. They have a real SATA port. So if you want to do Gluster and stuff like that, um, you'll actually get real performance as opposed to on the Pi where you get no performance. Um, the BeagleBone, if you want to do IoT related stuff, is awesome and we support a whole bunch of stuff on that. Uh, um, and, and it's very well supported. Um, the wand board um, for a bunch of different use cases and there is now an accelerated driver which should do full workstation acceleration. None of the user space stuff has been released yet and the people that are writing that stuff are too busy feuding within their own little community to actually get anything done. Um, but So the wand board and a bunch of devices like that are pretty good for XFCE style desktop. Um, and audio related stuff because they have um, digital audio and digital audio through HDMI that works pretty well. Um, so it's a hard question to answer because they're like we literally now support about 180 devices and depending on your use case and what you want to use it for depends on the device I would recommend.
I would like to, I would like to add that the Snapdragon has potential as well because it has the info for desktop use cases. Yes, so that was the dragon board that I mentioned that has a complete and utter horrible, horrible, horrible bootloader experience. Yeah. So and I did, I did try, I did try the, uh, the one more I gave you, I did try the uh, Debian image, I think it's a Debian image that they have. And the shell runs smoothly and the yes. runs smoothly. Yeah, and, and, um, and some recent stuff which I think is landing into the 4.8 kernel, the developer of that has done some really interesting hacks um, around the tiling um, thing, which adds about, in certain circumstances, 30% to the performance on that. Um, I'm hoping to somehow support that in Fedora 25. Um, I'm not sure how we're going to glue the bootloader bits for that together. There is U-boot upstream support for that now. Um, so it, we may be able to, if we can write that U-boot out in a particular way that is half sane, it may, we may get to the point where we can just support it. Um, but it's a little bit interesting. So the question is, what sort of objections am I expecting? Um, it is usual community bickering from half a dozen or a handful of people that will often just object to something for the sake of objecting. Um, I mean, I first floated this proposal as part of Flock last year. I've done a lot of discussions and um, talks and Q and A's and things with people that I care about their opinions um, and answered a lot of questions and the people that I expected originally to object to it from because of things I have said um, have been mostly positive about it which to me was awesome. Um, there is a couple of individuals that have already started even though I haven't posted it to the list of raising objections but you know they tend to be just objectionable for the sake of being objectionable. And some of objecting people mix. Uh, oh, Adam, you are there. I didn't see you up the back. With ARM64 bits. So when you say that uh, something about ARM V8, which is quite fast builders, etc., they think, oh, the slow, crappy ARM boards. Uh, so, Marson mentioned builders. We have in Phoenix racked up a moonshot chassis with 30 blades in it which I am waiting on a firmware fix from the manufacturer um, for a bug I managed to discover in their firmware, uh, not the first one. Um, and we should have that in place shortly. Um, there's a few other bits and pieces around orchestration of that, but I'm hoping within the next two to three weeks we will have the first batch of new um, V7 virtual builders, which um, so on the test that I did building um, the kernel and I think Java, the Java stack um, on a Mustang which is a similar hardware spec but with a terribly slow hard disk, um, we sort of cut the builds time by a half um, or at least a half um, and the um, Moonshot blades have SSDs in it so it may even be a bit better than that. Um, I was actually hoping to have it in production by now. Um, I wasn't quite expecting um, to have to go quite so deep into kernel and firmware issues as that. Um, but in the next few weeks, and certainly by the end of next, uh, end of this month, um, that will be in production. So you'll start to see that um, happen. And so the ARM v7 builders should. Um, um, improve an order of magnitude um, in terms of speed and um, build times. So I think that will alleviate a lot of the complaints. 16 gigabytes build RAM builders. No, uh, 32. Yeah, 32. So, 2.4 gigahertz. Yeah. So, so 8 cores, 2.4 gigahertz, uh, 64 gig of RAM, half terabyte SSD versus the current ones, which are 1.4 gigahertz quad core, four gig of RAM, and terribly, terribly slow laptop hard disks. So it, it will be, a, oh, and yeah, much faster network as well. Yes? My question is, is there not a network 
vehicle. Um, the, uh, you mentioned the vehicle phone. Vehicle phone. Yes. Uh, do you have any information on the hardware support for the crypto cake of the vehicle phone? Ah. Um, so I actually have, so the question is about support for the crypto cape on the beagle bone that will plug into the beagle bone. Um, I believe we can mostly support it. Um, I actually have one at home. I have on my laptop um, a list of all the bits of hardware in there. I need to basically go through and work out which bits have uh, kernel modules and whether we've enabled them in the kernel or not. Um, the biggest issue with it is support for device tree overlay. And so basically, device tree overlay is the ability to take a base device tree, su such as the one to support the base beagle bone, and then layer a subset of extra device tree depending on the stuff that's plugged into it, such as the crypto cape. Um, the support for up that upstream is almost there. Um, and that would basically mean that you can say, I have a crypto cape here, and it will auto configure all the hardware, and it will appear, and you can just consume it. Um, without it, you can still use the hardware, but you've manually got to tell it that, you know, this crypto thing is hanging off this I2C port or this GPIO port, um, and things like that. But it would still work. Um, Come and speak to me afterwards, and I can, like... It's a pretty compelling little device, I think. Um, so I've showed it to a couple of people, and, like, a couple of people just instantly went and bought Beagle Bones and Crypto Cake. Yeah, I didn't. Mean, so, you from somebody else. Yeah. Adam, did you have a question up the back? No, I think earlier you were talking about the discussion you had about the, the promotion primary architecture, and uh, I just wanted to mention, for anybody who wanted to read your proposal, um, a lot of those discussions fed into the content of the proposal. I think that like probably 98% of these questions can be answered the content you've already written. I just want to comment on that because it's, it's a very good write-up. It's probably one of the better write-ups I've ever seen presented at Fesco. Yeah, so I did a big long write-up to Fesco and there was a number of queries backwards and forwards. I have tried to condense the content of that and the queries that have been answered into a wiki page. I'm intending on sending that link to the wiki page and the link to the Fesco proposal out to the mailing list. Um, I've, I've been dealing with F25 branched and various other bits and pieces over the last couple of weeks. Um, and so as much as I've wanted to get it out, there have been other things that have been screaming at me to be done and more important. And um, I had some family stuff and some time in Australia. And um, I occasionally do need to sleep for a few hours a day. <laughs> um, anyone got any more questions? Yeah. Has there been some testing or demos or whatever on uh, mobile phones or other kind of... So the question things? is, has there been testing or demos on mobile phones and other um, sort of things? Uh, no, but yes. Um, so it, it's not a, a device form factor that we're actively aiming for. Um, the lead developer of the Freedrino driver, which is the Qualcomm um, GPU that ships on like the vast majority of Android phones, for example. Um, he runs Fedora on a number of mobile devices to do the development and test of that driver. Um, there's a number of really, really cheap um, all winner based tablets that you can get th that are like $30, $40 and we actually nearly gave away one to every flock presenter last year but there was a whole bunch of stuff that failed in the logistics um, which meant we could, couldn't actually get them um, but most of those are actually unlocked and so you can literally shove a Fedora um, like XFC image into the micro SD slot and it will just boot. Um, but there's not a lot of graphics acceleration um, so and there's I think in a lot of cases issues with touch screens and a few other bits and pieces which make them a little bit interesting to use. Um, there's a lot of emphasis um, on getting the Nexus 7 tablet working on an upstream kernel 
at which point it would be relatively straightforward to use a Fedora user space with that. Um, the biggest issue is that the bootloaders, so A boot, H boot, um, various other um, letters with boot attached to the end um, are a complete and utter train wreck when it comes to a generic distro because they're designed to see the 60 billion petitions that Android phones have and they will boot from a single kernel so if you screw up a kernel update you end up with a brick device where we try to have a you know standard Fedora experience where if the kernel doesn't boot you reboot and you go to the previous one from a menu um, and so it does work I know of a number of people that have used it or use it for various different development purposes with Fedora. Um, it's not a particularly pretty experience, but if you, like, all the user space stuff is there and work. It's not a um, device form factor that we really ha have an interest or time um, because the amount of people working on the ARM um, hardware side of things is a handful. And so we're focusing on um, things like the SBCs and IoT devices and stuff like that. Um, now the Raspberry Pi that people are interested in that are cheap that they can like get and we can support easily in a very... Um, and yeah, so yes, you can run a user space there quite happily. Um, the bootloader kernel is a bit of a mess. Yeah. Open 3D, sorry, you know, platform. It has the problem that it's bootloaders, it's particularly generally crap, and it's... But, I mean, the, yeah, I mean, the Nexus 7 is a device where there's a, a number of kernel groups that are concentrating on getting that support upstream um, so that it can be used as a completely open source Android AI... AOSP development environment, um, but it, it's focused around the Android and completely open source upstream kernel so that they can test for things like kernel regressions and stuff like that. I think at the moment they need around 30 or 40 patches on top of a kernel, but I think if you wanted to use Fedora on that, you'd probably need very few of those patches because the vast majority of those patches are aimed at the Android side of stuff. Um, so, but it, it, it's not something that we really have time to focus on because it's not really a primary user experience that we support anywhere else in the project. I think we've exhausted the questions. Excellent. <laughs>